Hi there, I'm Monica Sudikov, the chef and owner of the Chestnut Street Inn in Sheffield, Illinois. And today I'm going to show you how to make the best Eggs Benedict you've ever had in your whole life. So pretty much the quintessential, most popular breakfast all around on the planet. Well, maybe not the whole planet, but at least this planet. So first thing, of course, we need really good farm fresh eggs. Um, I've got a good one here from our local farm, little brown egg. And just so you know, there is absolutely no nutritional difference between a brown egg and a white egg. Um, it's as arbitrary as the color of your hair or skin. So um, I've got this lovely little guy here. All I need is the yolk. So we're going to go ahead and just separate that out. And probably the easiest way to do this rather than using the shell to separate them is to actually use your hands because then you don't damage the egg yolk. So I like to just go ahead and take the egg, pop it in my hand, and just by passing it back and forth, the whites sort of just fall through the cracks in your fingers and you have a perfectly separated little egg there. So we'll pop that into our blender here. To that, we also need to add some acidity, a little bit of lemon juice, and then we also need to add just a tiny bit of water. And then I want to do a teensy bit of kosher salt. Not too much. You can always add more if you need it. Fresh cracked pepper. Oops, my hands are a little sticky there. And then here's where I have a little bit of a kick. I like to put a little fresh grated nutmeg in there. Nutmeg just gives it that je ne sais quoi, that little extra oomph. So make sure you use the fresh stuff, not the pre-ground stuff. And you'll need one of these handy dandy little guys, a little microplane zester. And then we're going to puree this together just to kind of make it creamy and frothy to start. So I have my melted butter, and this is good quality organic butter from a creamery in Wisconsin I like to use, and it's hot. So what I want to do is incorporate this into the eggs as quickly as possible so that the eggs will not curdle, because if you add hot to egg yolks, they're going to turn into scrambled eggs, and that doesn't make very good hollandaise sauce. So we're going to start by having a slow blender and very slowly adding the hot to that, and then you're going to have a perfectly thick, rich, awesome hollandaise sauce. So here we go. I have to confess, I used to hate eggs, and I believe that it was because all I had was hard-boiled eggs, and they're dry. So I'm going to show you how to poach them and tell you that the reason that I love them now is, to me, they're almost like cheese. It's awesome. So we have to have some simmering water here. To that, we're going to add just a tiny bit of vinegar. All the vinegar does is it helps to uh, pull those egg whites and the egg yolks and everything together so that it solidifies them faster. So about a tablespoon or so to that. And now that that's simmering in there, we don't want it at a rolling boil because we don't want these to actually like hard boil. Um, we're going to make sure we crack the egg into a separate dish. The reason I'm doing that is to make sure that the egg's fresh, number one, and number two, to make sure that I don't get any shell in there. And then plus it's a lot easier to add in here. And then we're going to just go ahead and plop it in, let it do its thing. We're going to grab the second egg, also toss that in there, and plop some homemade pesto that I'm going to spread the bread with to start. And this is a spinach and arugula pesto with pistachios, something a little bit unique. And then we're going to put some prosciutto on top of that instead of Canadian bacon, which is also the other traditional version of this. Alrighty, so we have our toasts with the prosciutto and the pesto on top. I'm going to get my poached eggs. So with the poached eggs, we want to make sure we drain off any excess water so that they don't water everything down. You can see this is a lovely little poached egg, nice and tender there. Put it right on top. And then we've got our other one here. Again, nice, still runny center, beautiful. Put that on top here. And then we want to go ahead and garnish that with our lovely, look how thick and rich that is. That is a perfect hollandaise sauce. Pop that right on top. So we're going to garnish because this is a little Italian flair with a little balsamic reduction to make it pretty. And then one final little snazziness. We're going to take some fresh basil from the garden. I'm going to make a chiffonade. Chiffonade literally translates in French to ribbon-like cuts. So we're going to take the basil. I have several leaves here. I'm going to just roll them up and then we'll just run our knife right through there just like that. And you can see we have these lovely little ribbon-like cuts. Pop some of those on top just for color here. And then I garnish the plate with some fresh tomatoes from our garden and also some crispy kale chips. If you haven't gotten on the bandwagon with kale chips, you're missing out. They're better than potato chips any day, hands down. So we're going to eat this now, and I hope you'll join me next time from Chef Monica's Kitchen.